is coming, the bells are ringing, hope comes alive as music fills the air. slumber come see with younger eyes and be taken by the wonder that took the whole world by surprise oh. the city in a brightly lighted gown they're singing in the streets whenever christmas comes to town so let the spirit find you wherever you have been and bring you to the child who makes us children again oh. christmas is coming oh. the bells are ringing Welcome to Community United Methodist Church this beautiful Sunday Sabbath morning. Okay, maybe that's a drop because it's cloudy outside. It's been a little dreary, miserable, cold, wet December morning. But we, as children of the faith, the sun is always shining, right? It's always a beautiful day in the Church of God. So whether you're here in the congregation or joining us through cyberspace, Welcome. And before I get too much further, uh, Michelle has something she would like to share. Okay, so we're getting ready for Christmas in many, many ways. Um, after worship, if the children who normally go to Sunday school, or if you just feel like going to Sunday school today, children, if you would go to your classes, 
um, the children who aren't staying for Sunday school but are ready to get fitted for their costumes come to classroom number one and we will take care of those kids first and then we'll go to the Sunday school rooms and get the kiddos who are in class and take you out one at a time so we have just a little more crowd control that way back here um, and for those of you watching online, we will uh, fit kids then tomorrow night at 6.15 who are not here today. And then tomorrow night at 6.30, we will do a walkthrough of the staging. Like we said, there is no, um, there's no lines to be memorized, no solos, that kind of thing. But you will be portraying the nativity scene for the congregation. And as far as readers, do they need to be here tomorrow night? Yeah. If you want to, you can, but if it doesn't work out, we, it's very, very basic um, um, service that we just feel really confident that everybody's going to be able to step into and tell the story of Jesus' birth for the congregation. So costumes after worship, costumes tomorrow night at 6.15, and then we will walk through at 6.30 tomorrow night, and we really don't expect that being a very long um, rehearsal at all. Tuesday night will be music rehearsal at 6.30. And then Wednesday night, we hope everybody can join us for our Christmas Eve service. Thank you. And whether you're a parent or a grandparent, you know when there's kids involved in a Christmas service, it's always going to be meaningful and entertaining, both. For here in the congregation, if you received a bulletin, the announcements are on the back. But for those outside who would like to participate, tomorrow night, December 21st at 7 p.m., you will be able to watch our recorded version of our longest night service. And this is specifically geared for those who may feel alone or depressed, needing to reach out and find a little bit more reassurance at this time, especially tomorrow, when December 21st is most noted to being the shortest day of the year, but we celebrate it also as being the longest night because that can be just as hard. And then Michelle mentioned the Christmas service on the 23rd at 7 p.m. Other usual announcements are the Bible studies on Wednesday night, uh, Sunday school, the open door class on Sunday school on Sunday morning are not gonna be meeting again until after the beginning of the year. And hopefully this will begin to die down and we'll be able to get out a lot more. We are also looking into the idea of maybe doing a Zoom class if things continue a little bit. And if we do, then we will we'll post information on the website and contact those who immediately would be most affected and would like to participate. There's still a job opening here at church for a nursery attendant. If you would like to help with that, contact the office, email a resume, and let your service be known. We are still helping with the Community Pace Food Pantry. Whenever you come and you can remember, there are baskets in the doorways to be able to drop off your contributions. And in your tithing, you can give to support the church without even thinking about it. We have an Amazon Smile contact, so you can do your shopping and help the church in the same way Amazon does many other nonprofits. And there is the Script program where you can buy a gift card and that also, as you give a gift to someone else, you are giving to the church as well. So now let us turn our hearts to the Lord, lift our hearts in praise, because that's what we're here to do, isn't it? So let the music ring. Whoop. Ah. Let's get a prayer and an advent candle. Oh, well. <laughs> well, good morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Good morning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, it is a wonderful day. We're so blessed to be here. And wherever we are, Lord, we just say we thank you and we love you. And now, Father, we uh, humble our hearts before you. Speak to us, encourage us, strengthen us, challenge us, Lord, through this service, that all that we do will give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
In Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, it states, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. We light this candle with peace in our hearts, leaning on the promise that God would always be near. It is with humble and grateful hearts that we stand today and every day in God's peace that passes all understanding. Mighty God, in midst of the strife, turmoil, and uncertainty, we need this promise more than ever. We don't know what tomorrow will bring any more than Mary knew that would be in store for her and the the Christ child she would give birth to. We do know, however, that Christ came into this world to save us from our sins, and through his blood we would be adopted into the family of God. In this, we also know we have found favor with you and that Jesus is with us, which gives us peace. We thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to us and providing for our peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Join us in our opening hymn. Please stand. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay.
come now to the time when we celebrate joys and concerns. This morning we will have a great joy as we celebrate a baptism in, within the congregation. We have been experiencing a season of joy in one way from a worldview, we've been celebrating joy because Christmas has been celebrated since July in the stores. But now we have come more to the faithful and reason that we celebrate this season. And with that reason, let us take our hearts and our minds to him also with our concerns. Those within the congregation who we remember for personal and family reasons and health, Marianne and Lorraine Mason. Marianne is in the Oaktown home, and as you know, that has been a recent hotbed of COVID activity, and we pray for Marianne and Lorraine both. Jean and Carol Courtney are on the recovery and, and feeling better, as we have heard this morning. Ron and Kay Lane Brian and Karen Bible. Karen, hopefully, as she posted on Facebook, may even be able to go home this week after her long ordeal. I'm sure she'll be ready to get outside and breathe fresh air. Amen. Bob and Betty Freeze. Bob's recovery from all his problems of this last year. Jim and Patty Dryman. Jim's another story with Bob that we've been praying for. Wilbur Stewart in his recovery. Cheryl Marvel has recent uptick in blood pressure, and we pray she's getting better. And Barb Kirk has had batteries replaced in her pacemaker. It caused a little bit of a problem, and we hope Barb gets better soon. And our own custodian here at the church, Dennis Stone, has come down with COVID, and we pray for Dave Dennis's recovery and healing. And learned this morning, Phil Lone, lift him up in prayer. He lost both a half-brother on Friday and a half-sister earlier in the week. So this is definitely a time of healing and feeling a little bit of loss within the family at a, what we normally think to be a joyful time of year. So knowing the concerns of friends and family, and as intercessors for others, as Christ calls us to be, let us take our hearts to him in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, for some weeks now, we have been in an Advent season of looking, expecting a renewal of the joy that the world knew when your son, Jesus Christ, came. And because he came, we have hope not only of salvation, but hope to carry us through each day as we face just the trials of living, whether it incurs health from a COVID, a cancer, a broken bone, or depression. We have hope that things will get better. And through hope, we have faith faith to hold on through all those tough times. You hold us within your arms. We feel your love, your compassion for us. And through hope and faith, we learn joy. Joy that surpasses the happiness that is transitory in this world. Happiness is only temporary. We experience it but it doesn't last. The joy that we have come to know through you and your son, warmed continually by the Holy Spirit within us, helps to keep us through. And through joy, we become peaceful. Jesus, you told us that your peace is so much different than what the world thinks is peace. That peace is conditional your peace through your unconditional love is so much more. We can face this world because we know peace through you. 
And on Christmas Day, we will celebrate that day that you came. You left heaven to live among us, your creation, a sinful creation that you came to show away, to give that hope, faith, joy, and peace. The light and the darkness. We are to be that city on a hill, not hidden, but to show what you mean through all those in our lives. You lived your life. You came as a baby, not a king, but you will return as a king. And each day and every time we lift our hearts and our minds with those guiding words that you gave us, those words have more meaning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we want to take a few moments to give unto the Lord of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And so for those who have not already done so, uh, you may come down at this time and place your offering in the plate. And we, uh, again, we thank everybody for the continuing uh, giving, whether it's online or here in person. So let us give unto the Lord then. the sky. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the great bounty that you have filled our lives with and for this opportunity, Lord, to give unto you out of all that you have provided. Bless and multiply, Lord, to your service and to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> now we have a very special moment here uh, of baptism, so if we could get... Uh, David and Holly and Isaac to come on down. Now, before we get started, would you guys like to go ahead and light your candle? Push it. It's stiff. Thank you. All right, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through the water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so this morning we present Isaac Joseph Bruner for you as uh, to receive his baptism this morning. And so for his parents, we have a couple questions for you this morning. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. If so, say, I do. And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? If so, say, I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which, has Christ, which Christ has opened up to all people? If so, say, I do. Holly, David, will you nurture Isaac in Christ's holy church that by your teaching example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, we will. Now the church, this is your turn. Your turn. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. And will you, with God's help, nurture these servants of Jesus Christ and this child in the Christian faith and life and include them in your care? If so, say, we will. And will you proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ? If so, say, we will. And will you surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others? If so, say, we will. And will you pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to eternal life? If so, say, we will. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you now declaring our faith. As we say that we do believe that you are God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. We believe that he descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven, where he is seated at your right hand. And will come again to judge the living and the dead. This we be believe and this we declare in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hear now these declarations of both the Old and New Testaments. When nothing existed but chaos, God swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, God saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, God sent the clouds, set in the clouds a rainbow. When God saw his people as slaves in Egypt, he led them to freedom through the sea. Their children brought through the Jordan to the land which he promised. In the fullness of time, God sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by the Spirit of God. Jesus called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Let us pray. Eternal Father, pour out your Spirit now and bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sins, clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen and amen. You know, Isaac, you look much bigger in your pictures. Look at that. Can you see everybody out there? Yeah, I know it's scary. We better get going, huh? (laughs) Isaac Joseph Bruner, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Through baptism, Isaac, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's creation and made to share in God's royal priesthood. So now by God's grace, may the Holy Spirit work within you. And being born through the water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ and grow to be the man of God you have been called and created to be. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. He do a good job or what? And now a final benediction for you. And now may the grace of God, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Each and every one of you, your family and your home, may the Holy Spirit fill you. And may his grace and peace live in you always. Amen and amen. Let's give him a hand, huh? And now if the children would come forward, uh, Cheryl's got a little something to share with you this morning. In a chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that'd be better. Yeah, that'd be better. Pull it back. Yeah. Come on. Good morning. For those of you that don't know, I'm a school librarian, and the greatest thing that I love to do is read to the children. So I thought I would share with you today my favorite Christmas book. It's called The Crippled Lamb, and it's also by my favorite author in the whole wide world, Max Lucado. So adults, get ready, because you might want a tissue handy. It's a good one. All right, you ready? Okay. Once upon a time in a sunny valley, there lived a little lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, and sad eyes. Josh felt sad when he saw the other lambs with snow-white wool and no spots. He felt sad when he saw the other sheep with their moms and dads because he didn't have a mom or dad. But he felt saddest when he saw the other lambs running and jumping because he couldn't. Josh had been born with one leg that didn't work right. He was crippled. He always limped when he walked. You see, I won't show you all the pictures, but I want to show you this one. See, he's got a bad leg. See his bad leg? So he can't run and play like the other sheep can. That's why he always watched while the other lambs ran and played. Josh felt sad and alone, except when Abigail was around. Abigail was Josh's best friend. She didn't look like a friend for a lamb. She was an old cow. 
She was brown with white blotches that looked like rain puddles on a path. Her belly was as round as a barrel, and her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were spent with Abigail. See, there's Abigail. Big old Abigail. A pretty big cow, huh? They loved to pretend they were on adventures in, dense, in distant lands. Josh liked to listen to Abigail tell stories about the stars. They would spend hours on the hill looking into the valley. They were good friends. But even with a friend like Abigail, Josh still got sad. It made him sad to be the only lamb who could not run and jump and play in the grass. That's when Abigail would turn to him and say, Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard. Some days he just felt alone. He felt really alone the day the shepherds decided to take the lambs to the next valley where there was more grass. The sheep had been in this valley so long the ground was nearly bare. All the sheep were excited when the shepherd told them they were going to a new meadow. As they prepared to leave, Josh hobbled over and took his place on the edge of the group, but the others started laughing at him. You're too slow to go all the way to the next valley. Go back, Slowpoke. We'll never get there if we have to wait on you. Go back, Joshua. That wasn't very nice, was it? That's when Josh looked up and saw the shepherd standing in front of him. They are right, my little Joshua. You better go back. This trip is too long for you. Go and spend the night in the stable. Josh looked at the man for a long time. Then he turned slowly and began limping away. When Josh got to the top of the hill, he looked down and saw all the other sheep headed toward the green grass. Never before had he ever felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye, rolled down his nose, and fell on a rock. Just then he heard Abigail behind him, and Abigail said what she always said when Josh felt sad. Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Slowly the two friends turned and walked to the stable together. By the time they got to the little barn, the sun was setting like a big orange ball. Josh and Abigail went inside and began to eat some hay out of the feed box. They were very hungry, and the hay tasted good. For a little while, Joshua forgot that he had been left behind. Go to sleep, little friend, Abigail said after they finished eating. You've had a hard day. Josh was tired, so he lay down in the corner on some straw and closed his eyes. He felt Abigail lay down beside him, and he was glad to have Abigail as a friend. Soon Josh was asleep. At first he slept soundly, curled up against Abigail's back. In his sleep he dreamed. He dreamed of running and jumping just like the other sheep. He dreamed of long walks with Abigail through the valley. He dreamed of being in a place where he never felt left out. Suddenly, strange noises woke him up. Abigail, he whispered, wake up, I'm scared. Abigail lifted her big head and looked around. The stable was dark except for a small lamp hanging on the wall. Somebody is in here, Josh whispered. They looked around the dimly lighted stable. There, laying on some fresh hay in the feed box, was a baby. A young woman was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Joshua looked at Abigail, thinking his friend could tell him what was going on. But Abigail was just as surprised as Josh. Josh looked again at the woman and the child, then limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him on the hay next to her. Josh looked around the stable for something to keep the baby warm. Usually there were blankets, but not tonight. The shepherds had taken them on their trip across the valley. Then Josh remembered his own soft, warm wool. Timidly, he walked over and curled up close to the baby. Thank you, little lamb, the, mother's, the baby's mother said softly. Soon the little child stopped crying and went back to sleep. About that time, a man entered the stable carrying some rags. I'm sorry, Mary, he explained. This is all the cover I could find. It's okay, she answered. This little lamb has kept the new king warm. A king? Joshua looked at the baby and wondered who it might be. His name is Jesus. Mary spoke as if he knew Josh's question. God's son. He came from heaven to teach us about God. Look, see, and the lamb is laying close to the baby. You want to see? See the lamb laying close to the baby? 
Yeah. Just then there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds, the ones who had left Joshua behind. Their eyes were big and they were excited. We saw a bright light and heard the angels, they began. Then they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know who this baby is? He does now. It was the young mother who was speaking. She looked at Joshua and smiled. God has heard your prayers, little lamb. This little baby is the answer. You see baby Jesus laying with the lamb. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? That's pretty cool, huh? Here. Joshua looked down at the baby. Somehow he knew this was a special child, and this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. Had he been like the other sheep, he would have been in the valley. But since he was different, he was in the stable, among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. Joshua turned and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside his friend. You were right, he told her. God does have a special place for me. So, I want you to remember, this is a story of hope. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter. Some days we're going to have sad days. Some days we're going to have really happy days. Some days we're going to get sick. Some days we're going to be well. Some days we're going to miss people that aren't around us anymore. But God knows, and God has a special place for each one of you, always. God has a special place for everybody. Okay? Will you pray with me? I say, you say, here we go. Dear God, thank you for making us each so special for you. Bless our week, and happy birthday, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, guys. They're uh, working their way up here. David, can I get you to come up here one more moment? Ladies, go ahead and come on up. In all of our excitement, I forgot to present this blanket that was so lovingly made by some of the ladies in the church, as well as your certificate, and we'll get you a candle after the service. very, very much. Today, we're looking and thinking about God's 
overwhelming peace. Now the question comes is how does that and what does that look like in our lives? And maybe more importantly, how do I find that? Part of finding peace is as much, well, maybe not as much, but it is about perspective in some ways, how I decide to look at something. The other part of that, it's about our being. It's about living and embracing everything that God is and provides for us. To walk in that newness of life, in his presence, in his spirit, that's where the source of the peace comes from. So we're going to take a look at the 34th Psalm this morning to see some of the reasons why we should have peace regardless of what's going on in the world. Because let's face it, it's not very pretty out there, is it? <laughs> not at all. So here it begins this way, verse th or chapter 34, verse 1. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. So, what are you hearing there? At all times, always. We begin by kind of, and again, this goes back to what I was talking about there, about being present, being, uh, our being you know, in enveloping all that God has provided for us. And so we start off just, we just praise and lift up the Lord all the time. It doesn't stop. It's not just on Sunday. It's not on Wednesday. It's not just on a particular time of the day. It's all the time. Looking for those little moments, intentionally finding those times to give praise to the Lord. That is, praise is always on our lips. No matter what's going on. <clears throat> Verse 2 says, I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. See again, kind of repeating, just rephrasing a bit that same idea. I am going to be and exist and dwell intentionally in the glory of God. I do that by knowing his word, by knowing his promises, by knowing his spirit is within me. It's just the assurance and the faith that God is present. I will glory in the Lord. And then we have this little broadcast statement. Let the afflicted, let them rejoice in the Lord. Hear his word, hear his power, hear his spirit, hear everything that God is providing for us, and then praise him for it. Verse 3, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. There we go, number 3, telling us again, glorify the Lord, exalt his name. And now he says, do it together. So find other people to praise the Lord with. There's always somewhere, somehow, some way we can praise the Lord with somebody. Even if we happen to be in our own home by ourselves. We have phones, we've got internet, we've got the ability to talk to one another uh, through letters, cards. There's all sorts of ways to glorify God, but to get other people involved. You know, if we're raising our children at home, which is better than raising them someplace else, by the way, in case you were wondering. When we're raising our children, if they see us giving God praise all the time, if they see and know that when we talk about our faith that we're living it, that gives them something to think about because the day will come when they will have to choose. Am I going to believe as my parents did? There won't be any question in their mind what we believed. We don't want to leave them room to doubt what we believe and how dedicated we are to God. So it requires that constant, all the time, praising and glorifying Him. Verse 4, I sought the Lord and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So now we get back to that understanding of being deliberate. I am seeking after God. 
Why do I go to church on Sunday morning? Why am I listening to the service online? Why am I getting up in time to see and take place in all these things? Why do I attend a Bible study? Why do I go to a prayer group? It's because I am intentionally looking to seek the Lord. If you want some food, you're looking for it. You're seeking after it. You're going to the store. We got to go to the store. If maybe you're not into the buying things, you're standing in front of the refrigerator opening it up. I know there's food in here somewhere. Meanwhile, your parents say, shut that great refrigerator door. But I'm hungry. Fine. Find something to eat, but don't just stand there. Anybody here, anybody else ever stand in front of a cupboard full of stuff, refrigerator full of stuff, and go, I can't find anything to eat? We are so sad. <laughs> But we seek after the Lord. And when we do, when we pray, guess what? He answers us. And he delivers us from all our fears. God hears your prayers, friends. He knows what you need. He's there. And he will deliver us from whatever things we might be afraid of. Verse 5, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Has anybody ever met this person? Have you seen that one that just seems like joy is just flaming out of their head all day? I know you've probably run across this person at work and said, look, it's not even 9 o'clock. I haven't had my coffee. Tone it down. <laughs> I've met people like this. I hope I can be like that to others. That when people are around, they see the joy of the Lord in us. We want, to, we want folks to see that radiance of God in us. Because they need to know that our faith is real. That we don't just attend a church because, oh, that's the one I picked. That's the one I go to. That's the one that's convenient. Well, that's the one Grandma went to, and so that's why I'm going. Or mom and dad are going, so that's why I'm going. No, I want to go because I want to be there. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want people to know that what I believe is real, and I'm not just doing this for kicks and giggles. It has to be real. And when it is, it shows. It shows. We've seen that Spirit in the, in the hearts and lives of others. And we pray that they can see it in us. And when we do, we are never put to shame. Never put to shame. Verse 6. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. So again, kind of a reflection of what we saw in verse 4. He refers to himself. I'm just this poor guy. I'm nobody special. But God hears me. And God answered me. And God has delivered me out of all of my troubles. Now notice what's being said there too. That we sometimes forget or overlook. He's got troubles. You've got troubles. I've got troubles. Seems to me somebody said, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Yeah, maybe they have. <laughs> but we all have them. Because we know Christ doesn't mean we won't have them. In fact, we will have more simply because Christ is in our life. And the enemy doesn't want us to have any good time. And so he's constantly coming after us. But we rejoice in the Lord anyway. He hears our prayer and he will deliver us out of whatever comes our way. Here's another wonderful reason that we can have peace. Now again, think about all of these things we're talking about. This is why we can have peace. But here's another good one. Verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And he delivers them. It's like, whoa, there's angels all around. They're not kidding. Angels of God encamped around those who fear him, those who have given their heart to him, those who trust in him, those who are seeking after him, those who are glorifying him. And the Lord's angels, his heavenly army, surrounds us, encamps around us, protecting us, guiding us, helping us. Remember, there's more with us than there is with the enemy. Amen? Verse 8. Taste and see. The Lord is good. 
Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Again, another uh, encouragement. If you don't believe anything you've just heard, taste, try it out. Let me show you, the Lord says, what I can do for you. Taste and see the Lord is good. And blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Again, we go back to those moments when we have trouble. We just get into the presence of the Lord. We take refuge in his word. We take refuge in his spirit. We take refuge under his arms, knowing he will watch over us and protect us. Verse 9, fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. So now we're getting to that point, if we want peace, we got to understand that I am a sinner. I need the Lord. He is everything that there is to be. He is creator. He is king. And I am just a worm, as the hymn would say. We have to understand our place. We have to understand God's and rightfully humble ourselves before the Lord and show that we do know he is King of kings and Lord of lords. It's one thing to declare, to declare that Jesus is the Lord of your life. It's another thing to let him lead your life. And we got to make sure that we're doing that at all times. Because when we do... We will lack nothing. Verse 10, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Again, God provides a reason why we should have peace in the midst of troubling times. Because we know God is going to provide for us. Verse 11, come my children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days... Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Again, back to seeking after the Lord. Confessing our sins, humbling ourselves before God. And we find peace. Imagine the peace we have when sins that we have repented of and God has forgiven us. And those things exist no more. They don't exist anymore in the eyes of the Lord. We might still have the memory, but the guilt of it is gone. We now have peace. Paul persecuted Christians, even unto death, but he repented and he found peace. And God used him in more ways than you can even begin to count. And if he can do that for him, he can do that for you and for me. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears attentive to their cry. So all the seeking that we're doing, all the intentional uh, desires we are to serve God, to follow him and to hear from him. He's saying, look, I'm looking, I'm watching. I know what's going on in your heart. I know what's going on in your life. I know what your needs are. He's attentive to their cry. He's attentive to your cry and to mine. Again, you remember the, uh, think about this. We just had our baptism this morning. New mom, new dad. Brand new baby. And at some point, people are wanting to sleep. Amen? Babies don't always know that. But I'll tell you what. The first time that baby squeaks... And cries out in the middle of the night. Man. More often than not. Mom is up in a heartbeat. It's not that dads can't. And or won't. But moms for sure. Even when they're exhausted. They can hear that cry. And they're attentive to it. In the midst of their sleep. They're watching and listening. Does my baby need me? And God is listening And attentive to us. Do my children need me? 
However, on the opposite side of that, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth, which again is why he is telling us, repent. Don't do those wicked things. Don't say those evil things. Don't think those terrible things. Don't do evil things. Because we don't want to be against the one who gave us life. And so verse 17, the righteous cry out, and once more the Lord hears them, and he delivers them from all their troubles. You see how this keeps repeating over and over again. God's peace is being handed to us on a platter here. If we would just think about it and then live in it and and dwell in it. Verse 18, you got to love this one. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. We've all been there. We've all experienced it. And this year has certainly tested us in a lot of ways in that regard. But here's the thing. God is close. He's never gone away. He's still here. And it's about just enveloping and receiving all that he's giving us. That we can have that peace. That no matter the world's on fire and burning down. But the peace of Christ is in our heart. 19, the righteous person may have troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Again, he's there. He delivers us, gets us through our troubles. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of righteous will be condemned. But the last verse, the Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Again, a reason for God's overwhelming peace to fill us. We will not be condemned when we seek that refuge, when we dwell in him. God provides us one other time uh, or another example for us when he provides us peace. We find it in Luke chapter 2. And there, we've heard a little bit of about it this morning in some of the music, of the angels who proclaim the Savior is born, that God's peace will be with all of us. God's overwhelming peace is here, folks. All we have to do is take a hold of it and receive it. I'm going to share a song with you. It talks about that very moment. So, gentlemen, if you would. Look up, fear not, the angel said, Behold the Messiah comes, the one in whom you've read. And as they spoke to men that day, the heavenly hosts around the throne joined in to say, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen. And still today the wise men come, offering their praise to God's anointed one. And as they spoke, Their hearts felt love. This glorious sound was on their ears from up above. And they heard glory to God in the highest peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Glory to God in the highest peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Amen. Glory 
to God in the highest peace on earth, good will to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Glory. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. 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 Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a praise? <laughs> oh, let's pray. Oh, blessed God, what a glorious time we have. What joy, O oh Lord, fills our hearts knowing that we have your peace, your overwhelming peace filling our lives. Lord, if there's ever been a moment when we've doubted, forgive us. If there is sin in our heart or in our life, Lord, in our past, we repent of that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us, O oh Lord, we just humble ourselves and we cry out to you, Lord, and asking you, Father, encourage us, strengthen us, strengthen us, be with us. We thank you, Lord, for your angels that surround us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that fills us. We thank you, Lord, that you save us, you deliver us, you heal us, and you see us through all troubles. To you we say we love you. Thank you. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Please join us with our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let it begin with us. Now may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep you now and forevermore. Amen and amen.